Hey guys, Rhonda Draculis here, RK3 Designs, and we are on location. Uh, we're in New Braunfels, Texas, and over at, see I thought I told you I'd forget, where is it? Off-Roads Craft Beer Station. Yes, there. And this is Brianna. Hi. And so this is her and her husband's place, and we are going to be doing a huge bar. Um, this is one little tiny piece of the bar, and we're gonna start here and kind of get our mojo going and, and kind of make sure that what we do here, we can transfer on to the larger section. Are you ready to get started? I am. All right, so we're gonna mix up some black first. Uh, we need uh, eight ounces for this pour. And Brianna is one of my ex-students. She came to uh, our, our class, her and her husband, and um, she is super excited. This is gonna be her first, I guess, big pour. And um, I, that you're here. Oh, I asked if I could come join her and uh, she said yes. Of so course. I was excited. Um, all right, so we got part B, got that. Let's put the top on and I'll get it out of your way. So we always mix up part B first. Now she's gonna mix up part A. All right, so what we're gonna do is in our vision, we're gonna do a solid black background with a little bit of uh, the stone coat countertop dust, gold dust mixed in with the black. Then we're gonna do a vein through the middle and it's gonna be gold metallic, copper metallic, and blue earth metallic. We just want a little bit of that gold popping through. Most of it, we want to be the copper with a little hint of the blue. And the reason we're using copper is the flooring in here is, um, it's a stained concrete and it's got a lot of those earthy tones. So that's why we're going with the copper. But in our sample that we did at the shop, we put a little bit of gold and it was, it turned out really pretty. So that's, the way that our vision is. So we're gonna head that way. So while she's mixing up that, I'm gonna start putting the uh, mica powders into the cup. So um, when we stir it, it won't all be at the top and poof out. So while you're stirring, tell everybody kind of what this business, what y'all do with this business. Okay, so um, we specialize in craft beer. Um, with typically a little over 200 different selections at any given time. We have a bottle shop um, where you can get to-go beers. Um, uh, and then we have um, about 12 taps. We are currently um, closed for our relocation and we are obviously renovating the new location and we're really looking forward to opening. So I'm thinking this is gonna be a field trip from now on during our class. That's a great plan. We can just make this the art corner. Absolutely. So those of you that are interested in coming to our class, we're gonna have a field trip to the microbrewery. Well, we do have brewery tours as well. So we have a we have a bus that we can come pick everybody up. Oh, heck yeah. Bring them in. I'm thinking, yeah. And then for those of you who can't have beer or choose not to, we also have wine and uh, mead, which is like a honey wine, ciders, all kinds of options. Wow, that's super cool. All right, so I have my mica powders mixed up. Copper, gold, and blue earth. You can use a mixer with this. This epoxy allows you to use a, an electric mixer. The bubbles that it uh, entrains as you're mixing are very easily taken out when you torch it, but it's such a small amount, we decide just to do it with our hands. We're going to pour our colors. If you'll start mixing those up. All right, so I'm gonna take the black base tint. Okay. I know there's writing on this stick, and I know that as it drips off, I can't see through to the writing, so that's how I know I've got it opaque enough. If I wanted a very transparent tint, when I did this, I would want to be able to see the words on the stick, but we want it super opaque. So now we're gonna take the gold dust, which is sometimes referred to as gold fairy farts. We're gonna add quite a bit. Being that it's an opaque tint, it's gonna map. Yeah. It's gonna, 
it's going to mask quite a bit of what's in there. And the only time you're really going to see it is when the light hits it just right. And it's going to be really pretty. All right, so, and here we go. Okay, so, it's a little bit cool in here, not too bad, but I wanna go ahead and torch out the material before we trial it, just to kind of help it flow a little bit. All right, you wanna trial? Sure. There you go, ma'am. I really like this device, I need to get one. Yes, it's pretty cool. All right, so what she's done is she's taken the trial and she's gone over the top, leveled it out. We use a one inch or one eighth inch by one eighth inch square notch trial. And that's gonna leave just the right amount of material onto the surface. Uh, you could use your hands. And for a small project like this, uh, if this were the only thing I was doing, I would probably would use my hands, but I want her to get some practice uh, with the trial since we're fixing to do a really big pour. And, um, but the trial leaves just enough of the material on top so that as we start to level out, we get um, a really, 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 really smooth level finish. Now, at this point, we usually get a brush and we chop it, but it's such a very small amount of uh, surface area. I'm just gonna let her do it and me do it with our hands. It's just a lot quicker that way. So let's go ahead and take our material and push it over the side. And as you push it over the side, use your hands Wow, that gold is really pretty. So we're gonna torch it out. All right, so let's start. I think what we did is we started with gold the first gold time. Gold on the bottom. Okay. All right, so we'll start with gold. And then we put copper. So we already did a sample board at the studio. So we, we kind of have an idea of what we're wanting to do. We're just uh, following the same steps. And then we just kind of started melding it in. All right, so here we go. So now, what did what do you see? Which way do you want your vein to move? Because it's getting a little warm. I want it to cool down a little bit. I, I actually like the the direction that it's at right now. Okay, and you like the blue bleeding into that, mm -hmm. like that? Very much. So we're gonna come in and we're gonna push this together a little more. Okay, kind of like that. What do you think? I like it. I like that a lot. And it's gonna move, so we need to give it some time to, to do its thing. See these little fish eyes? Those little, they look like little tadpoles. Mm -hmm. Okay, what that is is your mica powder hasn't been stirred enough, mm -hmm. so it's almost like cake batter when you're when you're doing okay. it and you hit the little dry balls. Okay, okay. so I need to be stirring That's, it. Yeah, but it, it does give a really cool effect. Yeah. So it, you know, it, it doesn't bother me. I think it looks kind of neat. Um, but we're gonna let this sit for about 15 minutes we're gonna let the epoxy move. We're gonna let it kind of fight each other, all these little additives, and we'll come back and see where we're at. 
All right, so what she's wanting to do is she wants to get some effects, almost like cell effects. Um, so what we have is clear 91% isopropyl alcohol, and we're just barely dripping. We're doing it uh, right here. On here, and what it's doing, it's causing some separation with the colors and kind of giving some neat effects. We're just gonna do a couple of places first just to kind of see if she likes that effect. If she doesn't, we can always retorch, use the heat gun, move the epoxy again, and you'll never know that we did it. I like that look because it makes it look more organic coming across here. Because you know those cells at this point in the stage because our epoxy is very new and it's very fresh, that those aren't gonna stay like that, but it's, it's gonna keep that almost like that two-tone look. Yeah. Anytime you use alcohol, you do get surface tension and all you have to do is touch it with your finger. I kind of would think you would do something yeah. right around here. There. Cause that's just gonna kind of make it look very, very natural. All right, very cool. Okay, so let's let it sit. We're gonna let it set now. We said that 10 minutes ago, but now we're really gonna let it set and come back and see what we got. Okay guys, we uh, let this set about probably a good 30 minutes maybe. And we had some extra uh, extra resin left in the cups that was tinted, the, the copper and the black. So I actually took a little paint stick, a little one, not the big one. And I just drizzled some down kind of to break up the colors and give a little bit of distinction. We, we, we kind of wanted our eye to have a little bit of distinction. So we did that. And we're gonna call it a day on this one. If you like what you saw, you like this video, give us a thumbs up, hit the bell, subscribe to our channel, and leave some comments below. Maybe would you add a different color? Would you stop at a certain position, a uh, certain place? Would you go even farther? Uh, let us know. And I appreciate you watching. And remember, don't be scared, move forward, and be creative. Yeah.